Hi, welcome back to my channel. And here today, we are definitely going to be talking about plants. I often talk about a lot of other things, yoga, meditation, and even homeschooling. But today we are very specifically talking about plants. One of my favorite plants in the whole world, and that is the spider plant with all its babies. Uh, Chlorophytum commosum is the most common variety, but today we're gonna talk about a few other ones too that you can bring into your world and into your house. So I uh, go ahead and be comfortable and we're gonna have a conversation that will be surprisingly interesting for such a common plant. So here we go. The first thing I wanna tell you is that I do classify all of my plants and keep them very organized inside this notebook. So anytime that I receive a new plant, we put it in there and I can see which groups I have and which ones I'm looking for and things like that. It's kind of a collector thing that I do. And I'll probably do a video on exactly how I do that and what the process is for uh, bringing in a new plant into my house, whether that's something that I've mailed or something that I have found in a nursery. So I will do a video on that coming up very soon. But today we're gonna to be basically talking about the spider plant. First, I wanna let you know that the spider plant is one of the first house plants that we ever had. It's very, very old. And the very first kind of spider plant you ha we had, you can see right behind me here. This beast of a guy is really special to me. This is actually the first house plant that I ever owned. And this house plant is well over 25 years old. It's very big and it has babies galore. It gives and gives and gives. And then it also, these spider plants, they shoot off these nice long strings, which the babies uh, come off of. But first they have a little bloom and this little bloom will then eventually become a place where you'll have a baby. Now to get a baby, you simply take that. You'll notice I like to pick the ones that have more of the root system already developed on there. And you just snip that off and you can put that in water or for some people, they like to put that directly into soil. I've always put it into water to achieve just a little bit of roots. And I've got some that I'm gonna show you here that are really close to being able to be planted. And then you just put that in the soil. So uh, let's talk about some varieties first. So like I said, this is the very first one. And this is an old, old plant. The, but this kind of a spider plant was called the vitatum. And you know if you have a vitatum spider plant, because you'll see that the variegation or the white is on the inside, usually pretty small. And the leaves, if you were to measure them, are gonna measure somewhere around 60 centimeters. That's your big clue here for a vitatum if you've got that old version of this plant. Now, another really old version of this plant is over here, and this is the solid green form. So again, it has a plethora of babies. You can choose from and make new plants. They make great gifts, and they root up really well. I have one of its babies right here. So this rooted up for probably only about two weeks, and this is two babies put together in this pot. And you can see now, this is about, three weeks from the time I snipped this off the mother plant, we have a really healthy little plant here, which actually I'm gonna be gifting to a friend of mine who is starting in her plant fascination, her plant amazement, her plant collection. So that's actually going to be a great gift. If you're looking for homemade gifts, nothing is quite as good, I think, as a living gift and this is also recognized by NASA as one of the clean air plants. So the more spider plants you have in your house, the cleaner your air is. And I think right now that's something that we're all thinking about. So that's the green, the solid green spider plant. And this is also the Chlorophytum commosum, all right? So I say that specifically because we're actually going to have some relatives of the spider plants in this video that a lot of people don't realize aren't exactly the same, all right? But first let's stick with the same, okay. So this one here is a reverse. So if you'll notice, as I put this close up, that the variegation or the white is on the outside of the leaves. So in this country, we usually call this a reverse variegated, but scientifically, we would actually call this the variegated spider plant or chlorophytum commosum. So there are a few different kinds of reverse variegated plants, and this is where it starts to get a little interesting. So there is also one called the um, picturatum uh, reverse variegated, 
which would have longer leaves, much more like the vitatum. This one right here, I'm pretty sure this plant is only about a year old, so it could still grow some, but from the pattern that I'm seeing here, it has much shorter leaves. These leaves are only about 12 inches or 30 centimeters long. The pictoratum is supposed to have much longer legs, le leaves, not legs, spider legs, leaves much more like the vitatum, which has those 60 centimeter, uh, very long cascading leaves. The uh, variegated reverse also has the shorter leaves around 30 centimeters. And I found that to be true constantly with this plant. It gets bushier and bushier, but the leaves don't get much longer. So if this would be a pictoratum, I would see very long leaves on them. So because I don't see this, I believe this is the variegated version of this type of spider plant. Now, I will show you another one here. This is also a reverse. If you look at that, this is a brand new one. I actually ordered these cuttings on Etsy and I'm growing it out because this one it claims to be what's called the ocean spider plant or uh, chlorophytum comosum. The ocean spider plant is a version of the reverse variegated, which is uh, supposed to be a much more diminutive, petite, miniature version where the leaves stay very small. I won't know if in fact this is the ocean uh, for probably at least a year when I can start to get a good measurement. Now this guy looked a lot better yesterday. My daughter was painting her nails and accidentally bumped this guy and he fell out and broke a couple of leaves. But that's one beautiful thing about spider plants. They are tough, tough as nails. And one of the reasons they're tough as nails is their root system. When you repot your spider plant, you will notice that it is a solid bunch of thick tuberous type roots and they can even blow through the side of a plastic pot if, it, if you wait a little too long. Uh, I've noticed a lot of people say that spider plants like to be root bound. I have noticed that that is not the case. In fact, this guy over here, which we can get into right now, uh, started to really dwindle. His leaves started to lose their color. Uh, he started to be a little bit sickly. And when I popped him out of the pot, I noticed that he was severely root bound. I gave him a new pot and he's bouncing back great. So this one is another type of our uh, basic spider plant called the bonnie. The bonnie plant is a variation of the, the spider, uh, regular spider plant that has more curly type leaves. Now you can see, really see it on the babies. Now the babies are just curly as can be. As they get bigger and fuller and uh, they do kind of lengthen a little bit, but they do keep that more bouncy, type of a look of a bonnie curly spider plant. The main version that we have in this country is the variegated version. You'll see that the variegation is on the inside of the leaf once again, but I had known for several years, I've had this plant for a couple of years now, um, I have known for several years that there is a version of this that in fact is solid green, but at the time I couldn't even find a picture of it, only that it was listed as a variety. What's really cool this year is I did find a seller finally on uh, eBay that is selling what he claims to be the solid green version of the Bonnie spider plant. So I'll be growing this out. In fact, this is a great one to see those roots. If you look at the roots, these are now ready to be planted. So as soon as the weather clears up here and we have a little more sunshine, I can get outside. This guy's going into some dirt. This one is... Um, going to be interesting. So far, it has the characteristics of the curly babies. I'm seeing very, very small curly type leaves. So I have a lot of hope that I have in fact found the mythical curly green spider plant, which I did do an unboxing of this on this channel if you want to see when I got that. So that'll be into a planter soon. That's another type. Uh, now that's all the chlorophytum camosum that I have, but I want to get into another one. And I have my, my little notebook here that I write everything down because I want to make sure that I say this correctly, because the next one that we're going to talk about is what is commonly called the Hawaiian spider plant, which actually is not a camosum. It's a chlorophytum viridenskins, 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 which is of course a cousin and part of the family but it is not technically exactly the same, although you will see as I show it to you, very similar. All right, 
So this is what they call the Hawaiian spider plant. And when the new leaves come in on this, there is that nice white stripe down the center of them. But as the leaves get older, they fade out to this more beautiful green color. This is also very typical of spider plants to have those little browning tips, especially if you don't have it in a high humidity place. This is by a door, so it doesn't have quite as much humidity. I live in Nevada, so the outside air is always a lot drier than what we've got inside. So you can see that on this one, they do shoot out the babies, although I've noticed that it's quite a bit less and they're bunched together a little bit more, as you can see right there. Um, so the growth pattern is a little bit different. It's much bushier. The leaves are a lot wider on this. So though it is related, it is a cousin. This is not a camosum, but a great addition to your spider plant collection if you have one. And a lot of people don't realize that this even exists. And this was really neat. I found this one in a Walmart and it was labeled, um, hi, my name is spider plant. But I had been looking for one of these for quite a while. So I recognized it immediately for what it was. And it's been really fun to grow to see the growth pattern, although very similar, is a bit different. So. Now we're going to talk about one that is really, really different. Still part of that nice spider plant family, but uh, this guy actually does not throw off babies. The only way to get babies of this plant is to divide the plant. And I have a baby and it took me a little bit to find one. I had heard some people found this in Walmart and bless you, I don't know how you did that. I've been looking forever. I finally had to order it. And I'm so glad that I did because this is a beautiful plant. Let me get the name correct. It's often called the Mandarin spider plant or the, I think it's fire flash spider plant. But what it's actually called is Chlorophytum aminase or this one says Chlorophytum orchidastrum. And this is the Mandarin spider plant. Now, as you can see, the growth pattern of this is very similar, but it will not show and throw off the, the long strands with the babies on this. Now, we also talked about um, how these have very tuberous roots in that, and this one does. This is a great grower. It's a beautiful plant. It's got that beautiful Mandarin color on it, just to have as a plant. I have it, of course, because it's part of the family, part of the collection. But this is just a beautiful plant and it's growing like gangbusters. It's gonna be really simple, just like them. So I'm always asking people that I see have reverse variegated, how long are your leaves? How long are your leaves? Hoping that I will find somebody that has the one that I'm looking for because I'm missing it. There is also one other one that I have been on the lookout for. I've only seen it in somebody's house once when I was a kid and I never saw it again. And that's the miniature spider plant. Now, this could be a version of it. This ocean spider plant could be a version of it. But the one I saw actually did have the variegation in the center and it was a full grown plant that was very small. And I've been looking for it ever since. They don't sell it anywhere. It's not sold, at least in this country, that it's not sold anywhere since probably the 70s or 80s. So whoever has it is probably somebody that's had it for a long time or has babies off of something that somebody else had for a long time. So I'm always looking for that one. But all in all, these guys like bright, indirect light they will get a little sensitive to too much light they will fade out and lose their green color so if you start to see that happen pull it back and it will be fine um, they love to be watered but they don't like to sit in a lot of water so i like to let them dry out in between waterings and then water them really really well and keep an eye on the root system if you notice that your plant is declining and it's got good light and it's been watered and all of these things please check your roots because that thing could be bursting out of the pot. And it's not unusual to repot your plant at the beginning of summer and have to do it again at the end of summer. Now you can divide your plants if you don't want them to get that big. You can divide them. A lot of people do it to keep them small. And then always what's really cool is the givingness of this plant. You can easily, easily, easily propagate this plant and get many more. Here's another Hawaiian that I've got going and you can see those roots are ready for some dirt and this I started propagating last week that quick that quick and you have a wonderful gift to give to all of your plant friends so I think I've kind of gotten into everything here I do fertilize them in the growing season once a month and I use always organic fertilizer that is very gentle on all my plants I use the Espoma liquid fertilizer and I find that I don't have any burning when I use that. And so I just prefer that as far as pests, 
I haven't ever had a pest on one of these plants. And like I said, this one is over 25 years old. So it has been with me through moves and college and days where I, I, you know, I didn't even know what I was doing with plants. I managed to keep this thing alive. So that and my Sansevieria or Dracaenia as they call them now. So these are hardy plants and they're good for a starter plant. Plus they give you babies. If you have any questions or if you can ha have any more information that I missed on here, please put it in the comments. And I hope that I find a lot of you spider plant fans out there. I think it's an overlooked plant a lot of times and they're such a joy to be able to raise and to grow. So thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time.